silicon moulds. They can be made in so many different ways, but I'd like to be able to make unique silicon moulds as easily as I can. So in this video I'm going to share the carry on of my process. In my previous video I made some plasticine cookies and they took me really quite a long time, so this is a much quicker process. To help me make these unique silicon moulds I'm going to be using some stamps and some plasticine. I'll show you how I made this Oreo cookie stamp later in the video, but you can also use lots of embellishments you have around your home, or like the bee here. I designed this for lino printing, but you can also use the same technique, and I have another video where I show you how I made this bee. But you can always find plenty of ready-made stamps in craft shops. Plasticine is also quite cheap and easy to get hold of, so I'm rolling mine out here on a board till it's whatever thickness I require. I then take my selected stamp and embed this into the plasticine. Just make sure you get a nice even pressure across the whole piece. I'm gently removing from the plasticine to reveal my design. Ideally we'll then have a cutter to cut out the correct size, or you can of course use a knife. So that really is quite easy, simple, straightforward, and we're on our way to making our silicon mould. Just be gentle with the plasticine so we don't lose any of that detail. And then I go in and make a second one, and then I'm going to make a third. And as you've probably guessed it, I'm making an Oreo cookie. For the silicon housing, we need some element of cookie cutter, and this is the one I'm using today. This little shape that I'm making here is the cream for in the middle of the cookie. I don't have an exact size cookie cutter so we just improvise and trim off the edges and smooth it down. This is the cream for the cookie after all. To make my unique stamps whatever design and size I require I use some of this rubber stamping mat and I use it alongside my laser engraver. I'm using an X-Tool laser, so I'm using X-Tool Creative. It really is quite self-explanatory, and you can put any design you wish on there, change the parameters, and then we can burn this into the rubber. I have other videos where I show you this working. It really is a fantastic machine, the X-Tool F1, but I appreciate not all of you do have one or have access to anything like this, so you can use those rubber stamps that you can buy in the craft store. You could also purchase online some more unique stamps and cutters. This really is a little piece of magic, and as if by magic, there we have our design. I just need to clear away the soot and the debris and then it's ready to use as our stamp. The housing for the silicon can be cookie cutters of any shape and size or you can use a plastic tub. I do go into this in more detail in some of my other videos. But of course I've designed and made these cookie cutters especially for this project and I am printing them out on my 3D printers. Again, something I don't expect you to do, but it's nice to see, and I like to go that extra mile and make my silicone moulds that lovely design and shape. But you can use any cookie cutter, or a tub as I suggested earlier. I have all the pieces that I need to make our silicone mould, and so I'm taking some sticky tape, I'll stick down my cookie cutter, and then stick the plasticine down inside here. Hopefully you think all parts of the process are really quite simple and easy so far and that it inspires you to give it a try. You see lots of people adding hot glue around the edges of their cookie cutters but again I like to use a bit of plasticine and this can be reused over and over again. So plasticine is definitely my friend in this project. As I rolled and cut the plasticine out, it was actually sticking to my surface, so I decided to see if I was able to use the tile surface as my base instead of the sticky tape, and so that's what I'm trying with this one. The centerpiece, I had to remove that, so I'm just adding a little bit of sticky tape and sticking this down onto my tile. Using the plasticine around the edge again. I now have my two part silicon mixing equal quantities of both. You really don't need much for a project like this, I did about 70 grams of each. Follow the instructions on the pack and stir thoroughly. 
This silicon rubber that I have is very low odour but do make sure you're in a well ventilated area and I always protect my surface and wear gloves. I'm pouring nice and slowly and this finds its own level and it's really bubble free so you don't need to worry about pouring it in the base first, you can just pour it in and it finds its way. Most of the time when I'm making silicon moulds I like to add a little bit of colour and so this is just a tiny bit of mica powder to change that colour and it makes the silicon mould that bit more pretty. But not necessary and of course this is fine to do if you're using epoxy resin which I am. When using UV resin you would need that silicon to be clear. I then leave the silicon to cure overnight. Now the moment of truth we can remove all of our design to reveal our silicon mould and let's hope it's worked just perfectly. The plasticine has come off cleanly so I can use this again. I have a lovely firm mould here and let's see the detail. These little plasticine discs just pop out to reveal our detail and then the real test is when we use them to form some resin or of course you could use these for air dry clay looking wonderful and I'm going to see if I can use those plasticines yet again. This is the mould where I didn't use the tape so I'm removing this all off as well. It's not leaked, it's done fantastically, it's just that little bit more stuck to the tile and I can release this from the tile. The only difference is there's been a slight bit of seepage underneath the rim of the cutter and this, if, you, if it does happen to you, you can just take some scissors and trim this. And here I have two silicon moulds that I'm really happy with that I can make my Oreo cookies with. But I'm now thinking I want to be able to make those moulds over and over again, so is there a better solution? I'm going to use the plasticine again and see if I can use these to make another good mould. And so far, yes, I do think it will work like that. But while I'm doing this, I have thought of a bit of a better way that I'm sure I can do these. And so I have another follow on video that I'd love you to watch. It's a development from this video and just please come and see the results. This is what yours would look like if you used the round cookie cutters. So all perfectly well and good. These silicon rubber molds can be used for whatever you use your molds for. But here I'll share with you how I use these moulds with epoxy resin. I have a two part epoxy resin that I'm mixing together in equal quantities by weight. As I would like these to have quite a matte finish because they're a cookie, I'm adding some acrylic paint to the resin. Using plasticine to form these moulds does make the mould not so shiny but a little bit matte which is perfect for items like cookies and other things you want to form out of epoxy resin. I have gently poured some of the resin into the silicon moulds and now mixing some white acrylic paint for the cream in between the cookies. And as you can see here I have a levelling board to make sure everything is perfectly level and it cures flat. A little bit of heat on the resin helps pop any of those bubbles. These then take approximately 24 hours to cure. So I leave these overnight. Once you've made a mould, leave it to cure for 24 hours before adding that resin. The epoxy resin has firmed up and we can see how much detail the stamp has created in this mould. And you know, it's absolutely perfect. It's brilliant. The first time you use the mould you could use clear resin as this will just clean up the mould from any little bits of debris of the plasticine. I've mixed up some more epoxy resin as my glue so that I can sandwich these cookies together. Please do take a look at the video that came before this and check out the next video. All in all it gives you lots of tips and tricks on how to make these silicon moulds. Here on my channel, I just want to encourage you to be creative in any way possible. So I hope this gives you some creative inspiration. If you were wondering, I do hope to have some of my silicon molds over on my Etsy store. So watch out for those as well. I thought this was quite an easy and straightforward process to get to this result. But don't forget, I have this mold now to use over and over again. Thank you for watching right to the end. I love it when you do that. See you in the next video.